Hello, my name is Trina. I'm a medical cannabis patient. I partake of cannabis on a regular basis for PTSD, arthritis in both my knees and ankles, social anxiety, and a few other conditions you can learn more about through watching the previous shows on this channel. This is the Productive Cannabis Connoisseur, a channel dedicated to medical cannabis patients and adults 18 and over. So this is part one, but I have to had to make a second part one because my part one somehow didn't get recorded when I made it. So I already have a part two. So I'm gonna have to repeat what I did in part one <laughs> the first time around. So uh, pretty much what this show is about, it's a two part show uh, talking about uh, whether what I think about the idea of holograms and having holograms go on tour. Like for instance, Roy Orbison, because he's no longer alive, but making a hologram of, hologram of him so that he can tour around the world for those people who have never seen him perform live ever when he was alive. Um, I talk about my feelings on that in part two as well and I did talk about my feelings about it in the part the first part attempted part one. So this part one probably won't be that long. Um, I've already smoked almost two joints <laughs> and I'm feeling really elevated right now. So. Um, and my phone is charging. So um, there was a article that I read through CBS News, and I can leave the link for that in the description below, um, talking about these holograms actually going on tour, make people making money off of it. You know, it's like, is it that person's family that's making money off of it, or is it just Hollywood making money off of it? So I figure the latter is what's going on here. So I've got more joints. Um, I roll my joints with this stuff called Sugar Shake. And you've seen it throughout the week. I just don't have it with me right now. Um, <clears throat> so, and I think this is a joint without a filter, which I don't care. It's all right. I smoke joints without filters. Alrighty guys, thanks for joining me for part one. <laughs> Please do catch part two. I just finished recording part two. Ugh. So, ugh confusing day. <laughs> Cheers everyone. Sometimes things just work out that way. You know? How does cannabis fit into all this? It stimulates thought <coughs> and ideas. <coughs> and when I partake in cannabis, I'll read about something or you guys will offer up a topic and I'll think about it while I'm smoking cannabis and it really expands my mind on the topic where I'm seeing all different aspects of what that one topic. So. All right, let me grab my water bottle actually, and then we can get to going on this. I just want to read to you guys the um, the article that I found, and it's on CBS News. I know it's a I know that's a conventional news, but if you have any more resources specifically pertaining to this, feel free to let me know, and I can read that on on video. <laughs> so here we go. Let me bring this stool closer. Uh, and it's kind of dark in here. I apologize for that. Let's scoot you over more. There we go. <laughs> okay. Perfect. So the name of this uh, article is called Bringing Musical Stars Back via Hologram. Uh, so special effects are being employed to help bring beloved performers of the past back, almost as good as new. Many opera fans consider Maria Callas one of the greatest sopranos who ever lived. When she died in 1977, they were heartbroken. So they might be shocked to learn that Maria Callas is going on tour this spring, complete with a live 60-piece orchestra. Her return is brought to you by hologram, or what's being called a hologram. 
We're celebrating iconic performers and their performances, said Brian Becker, the CEO of Bass Entertainment, which created the Maria Callas Show. And we're presenting them to audiences to either see them again or audiences that have never seen them before. Most of us, most of us think of a hologram as a three-dimensional futuristic projection technology, like Princess Leia in the first Star Wars movie. You could walk all the way around her, even see her from the back. That's not quite what we're talking about here. No, no, this is a 3D illusion. But holographic <coughs> technology, or hologram, is just a good name that people recognize, said Becker. Maria Callas is hardly the first dead musician to take the stage again. The first example that really caught the public's attention was at Coachella, music festival in 2012 when rapper Tupac Shakur rose from the dead. That's fucked. The projection technology for the that stunt is now owned by a company called Hologram USA. At its theater on Hollywood Boulevard, Hologram USA offers a variety of holographic shows featuring stars like Billie Holiday. Oh my God. As it turns out, these high-tech shows aren't, aren't really new. They're based on a stage effect called Pepper's Ghost, an illusion popularized in 1862 by a scientist named John Pepper. An off-stage actor is reflected by a sheet of glass at a 45-degree angle, appearing to the audience as a ghostly, lifelike image. <clears throat> the projectors are up there, bouncing off a cinema screen that's nestled to the floor said CEO Alki David, and the image is reflected up at a 45 degree angle. But how do they get the video of the dead performers in the place, in the first place? Especially of Maria Callas, who died well before the age of high definition video. Marty Tudor, head of the base of Base Entertainment's hologram projects, had to recreate her from scratch. We started the body double who has to perform, literally, Tudor said, and our director worked with our body double for 12 weeks, and then we take the results of that and go to work on it digitally. <clears throat> Just as in the movies, special effects artists then seamlessly superimpose the computer-generated face onto the footage of the body double. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> That's just too much, right? It's just too much. Just looking at the time here. What we got on here? So what about the audio? In Maria Callas's day, the orchestra and the singer were recorded all at once in one pass on one monophonic track. But in this concert, the pre-recorded Callas will be accompanied by a live orchestra, which means that the company's engineers had to somehow remove the sound of the orchestra from the 1960 recordings. Oh my god. It's magic, Tudor laughed. No, it's software. It's software and it's technology. And it's artistry, frankly. It's a time-consuming, expensive, tedious job, but worth it. Bass Entertainment is also launching a Roy Orbison concert this spring, using the same techniques. For those of us of a certain age, those artists are all passing, so the idea that we can relive and recapture some of our youth, I think that's really drawing people to it, said Todd Richmond, the director of Mixed Reality Lab at the University of Southern California. Richmond spends a lot of time thinking about technology and art and using a device to digitally scan artists for movies, video games, and even holograms. Pretty soon you'll be able to have performances for the songs you don't have footage for. You can have them singing songs that they never sang before. So someday, not only can you have Tupac singing opera, but you could have Maria Callas singing hip hop. <sighs> Sigh. Absolutely. As though that's not boggling enough, one of the most popular singers in Japan today is Hatsune Miku. She's a computer generated voice coming from a computer-generated body. She opened for Lady Gaga on one of her tours, <clears throat> Richmond said. The singing is all computer-generated based on the algorithms. 
audiences are paying to see a pop star who doesn't exist. Absolutely. Concerts really, these days, exist not so much, I would argue, for the music, but more just the scene. Oh, wow. Actually, Alki Davis says the holographic singers are only the beginning. We did the world's biggest election in India for Narendra Modi, David said. We had 150 mobile units traveling India, and in 30 days, Mr. Modi was able to canvas the country four times within a month by live hologram on a daily basis. He won a landslide majority of like 67% to 68%. <coughs> We're talking about holograms changing the course of history now. Next, Pog. Sure, absolutely. David opens up. David hopes to open 150 hologram theaters across the United States. And Brian Becker says that ticket sales for the Maria Callas and Roy Orbison tours are going well. Maybe audiences will be convinced by the illusion, or maybe they will see right through it. But for the present, dead performers from the past are the future of live performance. That's fucked. That's the future of live performance is dead people recreate into a hologram. That's fucking fucked up, really. Wouldn't you say? Okay, so find out more opinions on what I think about this in part two. Because I had to remake part one. <laughs> and I'm going to read to you really quickly the letter, the email that I got from a subscriber by the name of Melanated Prose. He was nice enough to give me this idea for today's two-part show. So let me read that email and then I'm going to jettison on out of here. Oh God, okay. So here is the email. Hi Trina, I've read a bit about these hologram concerts of artists that are dead, transitioned, going on tours for live people and being used at the Super Bowl, in parentheses, Prince. <clears throat> Plus 30 to 40 date tours of artists like Roy Orbison and Maria Callas. Their holograms have already gone on tour or will go on tour. Amy Winehouse has one set for 2019. I can appreciate technology but find this concept creepy or unsettling within my soul. You have the dead artists without their permission singing greatest hits with a real band or orchestra of living musicians in front of living people. Conversely, it offers a chance for folk to see artists <clears throat> or groups they never saw while the artist or group was alive or performing. The estate of Whitney Houston turned down her being used as in a hologram tour. A good place to get information about this is the company that creates this. The company is called Base Hologram, which brings me to how you feel about the hologram tours. Would you attend one and what person or groups? I'd be interested in how you feel about this topic on an energy and spirit level too. It's where technology, death, music, and commerce mix together, but I, but I question, should it? Yeah, I do question should it, and I have the answer, no, it shouldn't. This is fucking ridiculous. Um, I wouldn't want to see any star perform live as a hologram. I want to see a real person. I don't want to see a hologram. You know? Fuck that. So, catch part two and you'll be able to see more of, hear more of what I have to say about, you know, Hollywood once again, cashing in on people that are dead. It's fucking ridiculous. So, thanks for joining me for part one. Please catch part two. And thank you for subscribing to this channel. <clears throat> All the people who just subscribed, I really appreciate each and every one of you. And I appreciate each and every one of you who subscribed and has been a long time subscriber. Even those of you who are right in between. <laughs> but thanks, thanks for joining me today. Uh, yeah. Thanks for sharing and liking my videos. I appreciate that. And thank you for the kind comments. Feel free to leave your comments down below and let me know what you think about today's two-part show. Catch part two, because I go more into depth, more in depth and detail about my feelings about this. It's, 
it's fucked up. It's, I mean, that's the short of it all. It's fucked up. If you want to hear the long of it all, catch part two. <laughs> Alrighty guys, brightest blessings to you all, and I'll see you soon.